All right, let's go. Nope. This one's all you, cowboy. What do you mean? Nate, you know I can't make that jump. That was a pretty good jump. You know, I give it a solid 5 out of 7. Like a regular barracuda, but only more acidic. Hello everyone, today we're looking at Uncharted Drake's Fortune on the PS3. As a dude born in the 90s, I can tell you Naughty Dog is one of my favorite game developers. Uncharted was the first game that took Naughty Dog away from teen-focused games like Crash Bandicoot and the Jack series and really showed everyone that developers could shift to mature content and still be successful. Thank goodness this worked out, because this series led to The Last of Us coming to existence. Uncharted Drake's Fortune wasn't anything groundbreaking as far as a premise. I mean, this is essentially a male version of Lara Croft. Drake's Fortune, unfortunately, has not aged well in the last 13 years, but at release, it was pretty impressive. Even now, the environments still look pretty decent, and the way the characters move look realistic thanks to motion capture. I do suspect the game was rushed for release, as it doesn't really show the same level of polish as Uncharted 2. With the game released roughly a year after the PS3's release date, I suspect the devs had trouble adapting to the new cell-based hardware. For gameplay, Drake's Fortune has two main modes, gunplay and climbing segments. Sprinkle in the odd easy puzzle and its rinse repeat cash the check after seven hours. One way they tried to stretch things out was to make the game slightly more difficult than it needed to be. I mean, we're not talking about Castlevania levels of difficulty, but it's noticeable even on normal. Seriously, the jet ski can burn in hell. In all good seriousness, I found myself dying more often than not from bad luck or my own stupidity during climbing sections. I will say, get used to being behind cover. The best thing about Uncharted is that once you beat the game, you unlock the bonus menu, and I love everything about it. There's render modes, skins, other neat videos on how they made the game, but the best is the weapon selection menu, which gives access to every gun in the game. My only complaint about the weapon selection menu is that the better half of the guns take way too long to unlock. You have to beat the game on the highest difficulties. I'm sad to admit this, but I have never beaten this game on the highest difficulty, which is called crushing. On the other hand, I beat Uncharted 2 a week from release twice and got the platinum trophy. That gives you an idea how much I love this series. This is normally where I'd jump into weapons and I'd explain each one and go into depth, but with Uncharted 1, there's not really a lot going on. There's a couple pistols, a couple rifles, two shotguns. That's really about it. I mean, you get a couple grenades here or there, but there's nothing really to write home about. The same can be said for the enemies. There's not really much of variety there either. There's pirates with pistols, rifles, and shotguns, and in the later half of the game, we start fighting soldiers with better gear and high-powered rifles, which kind of mixes things up. Overall, the enemies for the most part are kind of boring. The series fixes this in the second game, but you can't help but feel like the first game got the short end of the stick. As usual, I do want to talk about the plot, and without going into spoilers, the game revolves around the hero Nathan Drake trying to hunt down El Dorado with his mentor Sully and his love interest Elena. I like that Elena isn't just a damsel to be rescued. I guess what I'm trying to say is overall the characters feel believable, which is great. Without getting into the weeds, the plot is kind of boring in the first half, but it picks up later on. For the first game in the series, it works, but this pales in comparison to some of Naughty Dog's later projects. Yeah. Alright, let's jump into spoiler territory. If you don't want to have any spoilers, please jump to the timestamp above. The opening of the game shows Elena and Nate opening a coffin that belonged to Sir Francis Drake, but when opened only reveals his journal. The two are then attacked by pirates and have to be rescued by Sully. Later, using the journal, Sully and Nate ditch Elena and try to locate El Dorado in a nearby jungle. Upon finding the supposed spot where El Dorado should be located, they learn it was actually a 500 pound gold statue worth millions. The two then find a German U-boat and coordinates to an island in the Pacific. Before they can leave though, Sully is shot by the villain of the story, which is a forgettable man named Gabriel Roman. His skill set is being rich and leading a group of mercenaries. Nathan then escapes, runs right into Elena, and eventually the two make their way to the island to locate El Dorado. Upon arriving at the island, the two of them wind up battling pirates, and eventually they wind up fighting Roman's mercenaries. The island is shown to have a large colony made by the Spanish and English, which is now mysteriously in ruins. Oh hey, and we also come across Sully, who was saved by Nathan Drake's journal when it prevented him from being shot. Ah, oh, there's a hole in my book. Anywho, we eventually find Sir Francis Drake's corpse and figure out the statue of El Dorado is actually a biological weapon, which causes its victims to morph into immortal killing machines. This discovery led to Sir Francis Drake destroying all the ships on the island to ensure it would never leave and spread its sickness. The zombie design was pretty awesome. Considering we spent 80% of the game fighting dudes, this was a pretty hard left turn, but hey, you know, I liked it. 
Our heroes then try to stop Roman from removing the statue from the island. When the heroes intervene, Roman's right-hand man, also known as Navarro, betrays Roman by telling him to look inside the statue. Roman immediately goes insane, and Navarro turns into the main villain of the game by trying to steal El Dorado and sell it on the black market. Nathan then jumps onto the statue and hitches a ride to a nearby ship and murders everyone on board. He even manages to save Elena. Sully then swings by with a bit of treasure. Elena and Nathan fail to kiss, and the game promises a sequel. Thank Christ, because Uncharted 2 is amazing. Uncharted Drake's Fortune's plot is by no means bad, but on that same note, it falls short of being amazing, but it was a really good way to set the bar for the series. You know, I gotta mention this, I wish they didn't rehash the same idea three times over where you find an item and then travel the world, but you know, for the first game, it works. So, in summary, Uncharted Drake's Fortune is a good game overall. The gameplay is fun and the plot is pretty entertaining. But for negatives, the difficulty can be a bit annoying and the enemies are as repetitive as it gets. Uncharted Drake's Fortune just doesn't really stand out as an amazing game overall. You could play it if you wanted to experience the series as a whole, but other than that I would hold off. I'm gonna give this game a B-. As always, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you watching until the end of the video. And lastly, but most importantly, I hope you all have a great day. Thanks. Yeah. You two got a funny idea of romantic. Ooh, cock blocked by your mentor. That's, that's pretty bad.